the market is still fundamentally misunderstanding AMD's roadmap. Much of AMD's upside going forward goes by the way of AI. And the market still believes that AI at the hardware level is going to be fundamentally about selling GPUs directly to customers as NVIDIA does. And to be clear, I believe that is still going to be a very large part of the market going forward. But the main idea, my main takeaway from the Q4 2023 earnings digest is that AMD's various business segments, which are unfortunately currently declining or have been declining over the past few year, years, due to the cyclical nature of the underlying markets, they are going to act as highly differentiated and motor distribution channels via which AMD is going to be able to repurpose and distribute its core AI technology and thus obtain much better unit economics across the board than if it were to only go head-to-head -head directly with NVIDIA selling GPUs to customers. And what the market still doesn't quite get is that over the past 10 years, certainly AMD has disrupted Intel's dominance in the CPU market. But how it has done so sets the company up for success over the coming decade. Because AMD has disrupted Intel over the past decade via chiplets, which consists in connecting small chips together to create one big chip, which stands in contrast with NVIDIA's approach, which consists in creating one big chip directly. Chiplets give AMD higher yields and therefore enable the company to achieve similar levels of performance to monolithic chips, but at lower prices. That is how AMD comes into different markets by offering superior price to performance to uh, generally, it, I think it decreases the price of ownership and enables just as high a computational power, almost as high. Now, those 10 years that AMD has been doing this have enabled the company to get very good at connecting different compute engines. There is fundamentally no difference or not quite too much of a difference between connecting two chiplets or connecting two different compute engines or different compute units, such as perhaps a CPU and a memory unit. And so going forward, this positions AMD to connect or to infuse all of its product, uh, all of its product lineup with AI technologies. And if you think about it, this makes a little bit of sense economically or financially for the company going forward, because many knowledge workers nowadays are using LLMs to increase their productivity. And that is certainly my case. If ChatGPT or Gemini were to disappear tomorrow, it wouldn't be as bad for me as if electricity disappeared, but it certainly wouldn't be great and my productivity would go down. The next logical step that I would want for myself is a smartphone or a computer that does many tasks for me. I spend quite a bit of time every day doing repetitive tasks, which wouldn't really make sense for me to do going forward. I have to be focused on analyzing companies on my abstract thoughts and ideally on picking the right companies. But I still spend a lot of time doing manual work. Therefore, I want AI in my smartphones, in my PCs. And if you think about it, the economy is just 8 billion people processing information, figuring out what to do next. They need the same. They need LLMs and then they need um, personal computing devices that abstract away a growing share of the manual work that consumes their time daily. And so... AMD is already successful in the PC business. It does therefore has a distribution channel in which it has one competitor fundamentally, which is Intel, but in which it reigns relatively supreme. AMD PC customers, or rather CPU customers, are relatively well entrenched. AMD is well entrenched in the market. Therefore, it makes total sense for AMD to get its AI technology and distribute it via its CPU distribution channel. Because it's going to make the products better, it's going to make the customers more loyal, and the cost of distribution is going to be lower than going directly to customers in the GPU market where NVIDIA dominates. I believe that AMD nonetheless is going to take a fair degree of market share from NVIDIA over the coming decade just in the GPU arena. And, and I'm actually quite impressed with the way that the company has progressed. Because think about it this way. When we talk about AI, we are relatively used to talking about exponentials. And so when we see AMD going from zero dollars to 3.5 billion expected in fiscal year 2024, it seems relatively normal. The market was slightly underwhelmed for the guidance increase. Initially, AMD was meant to sell $2 billion of AI GPUs. 
And now in the call, uh, Lisa Su expanded the guidance to 3.5. The market was underwhelmed, but I think about it this way. Even if we are used to talking about exponentials in the, uh, in the AI market, the customers still have to try the products and make sure that they work in order to sustainably make big commitments. The manufacturing partners have to make sure that the products have demand before they commit capacity. Otherwise, they run the risk of leaving a large capacity idle and therefore losing on revenue. And that obviously affects their bottom line. So although AI is indeed about exponentials, the semiconductor market still has a large physical component. And it takes time for things to grow. And so I'm actually really, really impressed with AMD going from zero to 3.5 billion expected in 2024. And definitely the data center segment is up 38% year over year. So I think that AMD is going to do well head to head with NVIDIA in the coming decades, especially as it continues. AMD continues to iterate on the ROCM software, which is the alternative to NVIDIA's CUDA. Um, the Pensando acquisition brought, brought in a lot of software engineers, and I've seen AMD pick up its iteration pace on the software side since the acquisition was closed, and these engineers started working on AMD. So I believe that AMD is going to, uh, is going to do fine in that sense, but where I think most of the financial outperformance is going to come from in the long term is in AMD's ability to firstly combine different compute engines. I think that is going to create a platform whereby, think about it this way, over the past year, AMD released a CPU with an AI accelerator. That makes total sense because PCs have to make, have to carry out AI tasks. And so that is, I think AMD is going to combine computing engines in a way that is going to be able to enable them to reach pockets of the market that no one else can reach. And that is going to be a fundamental competitive advantage, which is going to increase unit economics across the board. And I think it's going to make the company's moat stronger. But in the same line, I think that AMD's ability to connect different compute engines is going to enable the company to infuse AI capabilities across its product lineup. And so, for example, I think that the market is currently underestimating the potential of AI PCs. I think in around five years' time, everyone is going to have an AI PC. Most of the world is going to have an AI smartphone. And these hardware devices are going to be doing a lot of tasks for us that are currently time-consuming, are manual, are tiresome, and they are going to increase the productivity of the workforce worldwide. And AMD is uniquely positioned to do that because it's the only company that has a strong distribution channel on the CPU side and has its own core proprietary AI technology. Intel has a relatively strong position in the CPU market, but it doesn't have AI technology. NVIDIA has very strong AI technology, but it doesn't have a strong position in the, in the CPU market. So AMD's roadmap is highly differentiated in that sense, in the intersection between CPUs and AI accelerators, be that via FPGA's field programmable gate arrays, or be it via the new GPUs and so forth. And I think that this is going to lead to financial outperformance over the coming five years. The other thing that I learned in this call or that I confirmed in my research is that indeed AMD has a memory advantage in its AI chips with respect to NVIDIA. This I've been glimpsing for a number of quarters and it stems from, again, AMD's ability to connect different compute engines because being able to connect chiplets gives AMD more granularity on chip. It enables them to more finely connect different compute engines. And so... This positions them strategically very well for the future because, as I've written about in the past, LLMs require a fundamentally different chip architecture. LLMs are big and occupy a lot of memory. So in order to minimize latency and increase inference performance, we need to put them inside the same chip in which we are making the actual computational tasks, such as inference and training. And by the way, I've talked a lot about this, but Inference is a core part of AI training. I have a post on this. It's called Artificial Intelligence 101. Check it out. And so this ability to, more, to connect compute engines in a more granular way is what enables AMD to bring better, better memory performance on chip. Since LLMs are getting bigger and bigger, it's not just about the actual product at T equals zero. It's about the underlying ability 
to continually increase the memory capacity and decrease latency simultaneously on chip. And that is what I think AMD is uniquely positioned to do as a part of the thing that I was talking about previously of AMD's ability to connect different compute engines. You see, it would have been hard to predict just how AMD's underlying ability to, com to connect compute engines would have surfaced. We, two, two or three years ago, I think it would have been hard to know that LLMs were going to pick up in this manner. But the fact is that they have, and AMD's ability to connect different compute engines has surfaced into a memory advantage at the concrete product level. Over the coming quarters, I believe we are going to see clear signs of customers in the marketplace seeking memory advantages. Because scaling up LLMs without a memory advantage or without sufficient memory requires connecting GPUs together in a way that is very, very cumbersome and increases non-linearly the cost of ownership, of, of ownership. So I'm glad to see that AMD's fundamental structural advantage is surfacing as a memory advantage at the AI GPU level. And it gives me more insight into how these products are likely to perform over the coming year or two. Because it's not just about AMD being an alternative to NVIDIA. It's about that, certainly. And it's about a lower price of ownership in general, which I think is going to be very attractive for customers going forward in this space. Now, about the financials, it's relatively frustrating to see the embedded and gaming markets uh, segments muting the extraordinary performance of data center and the client segments, which grew rapidly year over year. As such, following this dynamic, revenue is down 4% year over year, and this is expected to continue in Q1 2024 as the embedded and the gaming markets continue to bottom. Last year, we saw the PC market bottom, and it was sort of concerning. It obviously wasn't fun as a shareholder, but going through that experience for the 10th time or something like that over the last 10 years gives me great confidence in management's ability to navigate these varying environments, these highly cyclical environments. It's, it naturally, the question is whether, you know, can this company execute in all these segments and produce good financials going forward because it can perhaps be the case that as two segments go up, another two go down, and that can lead to muted financial performance going forward. But I believe that the structural advantage that I was talking about, combined with the exponentially increasing demand in computation, is actually going to take the company a long way forward in the coming decade. And as it refers to unit economics and thus cash flow production, the ability to tailor computational units to these specific demands of customers, I think, is going to lead to much higher free cash flow production per share than otherwise. I think tailored computation is the future because customers will have increasingly specific computational needs. Meanwhile, the balance sheet remains very strong with an ample net cash position of um, actually the cash and short term investments came in at 5.7 billion. And total long-term debt came in at 2.46 billion. Free cash flow and cash flow operations are trending down over the past year. Naturally, the declining client segment with the bottom in P bottoming PC market over the past year hasn't helped. The embedded and the gaming markets are on the way down. However, AMD's cash flow production remains positive. Cash flow operations came in at 381 million in this quarter. So the company is definitely not eating into its balance sheet. Uh, it seems like the amortization of intangibles from the signings acquisition are on the way down with uh, the gap between non-GAAP earnings and GAAP earnings closing. And I'm not particularly concerned about the decline in revenue and operating income from the gaming segment and the embedded segment. I believe that these segments will continue going up and to the right over the long term. And I believe that the core IP that definitely regarding the embedded market, the core IP that AMD embedded is fundamental for the, this platform that I'm talking about that I think AMD will create over the coming decade because FPGAs will act as accelerators across the board. FPGAs act like ASICs, so simple circuits, custom circuits that can reconfigure themselves on the go 
And so what they do is they optimize compute at the circuit layer and essentially at the electron layer. So I believe that they are going to be a key asset going forward. And in fact, none, n- no part of AMD's financials reflect FPGAs yet. This is technology that I think when AMD acquired it was not mature enough for this vision that I have for the company and that they have for their product roadmap too. I think it's going to take some years to mature and then eventually, all of a sudden one day, FPGAs will come to the market via AMD and will act as accelerators at a marginal price that will radically improve all of AMD's roadmap across the board. So although it's somewhat frustrating to see the financials of the AI progress being muted by the embedded market, I think that it's going to be worth it in the long term. So of course, I continue to be a shareholder of the company. This is my 10th year as a shareholder. The investment is something, I think it's up to something like 42 or 50x or something like that. I'm not sure. Um, but I, I do like the roadmap for the, for the next 10 years. And I believe that so long as the company continues printing cash and the balance sheet continues to be strong and so forth, I think that AMD shareholders are in for a good return over the past, over the next five to 10 years. And of course, none of this is financial advice. This is just for educational purposes only. Do your own research, please, and see you next time.